Hey, Garrett with CSI. Today we're going to show you how to rebuild your quarter midget shock. We really don't recommend this unless you are an experienced shock builder or you have access to a shock dyno to double check your work. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to walk you through the process. It's not super complicated. Um, but the first thing we're going to need is a vise to clamp the shock and a drip cup to prevent oil from going everywhere and making a mess. Um, you'll need a rod guide wrench, um, which you can purchase from us to uh, fit our shock and get the thing apart. So this is just a customer shock with a bent shaft and we'll dig in. So we got the shaft assembly out of the body. The next thing we're gonna do is take the shaft nut off piston and shims off the shaft. You want to be really careful here to lay these out in the orientation they were taken apart and that's why it's so important to have a shock dyno because if you get one shim wrong you're going to take a three valve shock and make it something different. So um, be really careful when you lay these out. Half inch wrench gets that shaft nut off and then I would just lay them out in the order they came off. Same thing with the piston. You can see uh, we have several different pistons based on what we're doing, but this particular one's our tall port. We have six ports on one side, three on the other. It, that piston can be ran in either orientation, so you want to make sure you lay it out exactly how it came off. So once we have our piston off, the next thing we'll do is we'll pull our rod guide assembly off the shaft, which should just slide off. The new JR4s have this brass uh, insert. That makes it really handy to, um, if you bend a shaft, a lot of times this will get oblong and you can just replace this insert, where in the past you'd have to replace the whole aluminum housing. Um, so the process is a little bit different if, uh, if you don't have a JR4, but this is how to rebuild a JR4. The next thing you'll need is an eighth inch Allen wrench to take this bleed jet uh, out of the shock. And this is another area where you can get fouled up. Um, we bleed through this jet and also through, also through the piston on our shocks. Where it gets tricky is some builds will have a roll pin and a check ball. So we're either adding bleed on the compression side or the rebound side. So if there's a roll pin and a check ball, it's going to need to go back in that same orientation or again your build will be different. So you'll take this jet off and then look down in there and see on this particular build and this particular build um, there's no roll pin or anything in there. The next thing we'll do is take our 916 wrench and break that jam nut loose and screw the rod end off of the shaft. The next thing we'll do is pop this clip out and push, you can do it with an Allen wrench, push this insert out. And what we want to do here is inspect to see if this bushing has gotten oblong, which it has. So a lot of times when the shaft gets bent, um, it'll stretch that bushing. So the nice thing with the JR4 is we sell a whole new bushing with the seals on in it and you can just um, reinstall this. If that bushing looked good, uh, we would simply replace this outer wiper, which is really easy to do. You just pull it out and then use a pick to get that inner um, seal out and then just replace the seals and replace the outer O-rings and put that back in. But since that was oblong, we're going to replace this whole thing. What you'll want to do is take a little bit of grease and just grease around this O-ring. And then clean out the inside of that rod guide. And then simply push that down in. When you go to reinstall the rod guide, we have this install tool that will go over the shaft You'll uh, want to put some grease on it just to 
lube the inside of that and also take a little grease and install inside of here. Grease is your friend. Um, it'll push any of the excess out when you install it and that's okay. So that just pops on like that and you can pull your tool off and then just wipe any excess grease off so you don't have clumps of grease in your oil but wipe the excess off all right now we're going to put the travel indicator back on the shaft and put our jam nut on i want to make sure that's screwed all the way up the shaft screw our rod end on And jam this up with the 9 16 All right, now at this point, <clears throat> if you had a check ball or a check ball and a roll pin in here, which a lot of split valve shocks do, you'd make sure you either drop the check ball in first, then put the roll pin in, or vice versa. But this is a straight valve shock, so it's bleeding both ways. There's no check, um, check ball. So you want to make sure you put your jet in. These jets are brass, so tight's tight, two tights, two pieces. So just give it a snug. And that's good. Then uh, now we're going to want to make sure we reinstall these shims in the exact orientation we took them off. So our support washer will go down first. And then we flip we flip the shims as they go on so if the shim was on there like that we flip it opposite um, that's will make the shims like fresh again doing that you can typically do that once or twice and then you got to put new shims in it so um, you'll know if you did it right because the big shim is what we call a sealing shim and it'll seal all the ports so if you got your shims mixed up and you tried to put this one on the bottom, that's not, not correct. So typically it's a pyramid stack, meaning biggest shim to smallest, but sometimes it's not. So really pay attention to where, how you put that on. So piston goes on, then our shims, and I'm flipping them as I put them on. And then the nut also is machined in one area. And that's machined for a specific reason, um, so that last shim is bending over a certain diameter. So make sure you put your nut back on on the correct orientation too, or you will have an issue. I torque this to 120 inch pounds. Okay, now the piston assembly is tight and back together, and we want to put it in the body. Um, if this was a shock we were rebuilding, we would take all the oil out, clean it, um, check the base valve, everything on a complete rebuild. But this is just at the track. You're trying to fix your shaft to get going again. You'll want to make sure you top the oil off to the bottom of the threads here. So fill that oil and then bring your rod guide all the way up to the support washer. This will prevent you from taking a bath right now. Otherwise, when you go to try to slide that down, it'll splash oil everywhere. So we're gonna simply thread this in. Sometimes if you feel it wanting to hang on the O-ring, just work it back and forth so you don't tear that O-ring. And then get that tight. Now that that is tight, so now that that's tight, um, I'm going to show you how to bleed it at the racetrack using this drip cup. Typically, we do everything with a vac fill bleed machine, um, but the average guy doesn't have that. We don't have it at the racetrack. So... What I do is I take this cup and I flip it upside down. So we're gonna take this bleed screw out. 
It'll probably shoot a little bit of oil out right now because it's pressurized. He shot, shot some oil and some air out. And then what we'll do is we're going to fill this cavity up over that hole. And now we're going to slowly stroke the shock. And compression and rebound. To try to get all of the air out. So we're basically bleeding it in a bath of oil. Once we do it slow a few times, tap it with your hands to kind of shock the shims and open the shims. Give it a second for all those bubbles to rise to the top. And now it's totally filled and we'll put our bleed screw back in. When you go to put your bleed screw back in, make sure the shaft's pulled all the way up because if it's in part way, um, you're not gonna get all the oil in the shock you need. Take that, dump it out. To go back and make sure this guy's tight. And that's how you put a shaft in a JR4 quarter midget shock. Again, we don't really recommend doing it unless you have a lot of experience building shocks or you have access to a shock dyno to make sure that everything got put back together right. I personally wouldn't even repair one of Hudson shocks at the track if I didn't have a dyno because there's too many little things that, that can go wrong. But if you have access to a dyno and you're an experienced shock builder, um, this is something you can try to tackle.